the angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Now Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Now Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. And let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In nome de Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. In tua volatile Dei, et en quinitifica juventus meum, iudica meles et juventus meum, de gente non sancta, ma homen en el coro lor sovereign, Amen. Quae tu es Deus, quoti tu de mare, quae ne plisis qualificis in ceo dum fris mentibus. E mente lucem tu humiltatum tu, mims e mente luxe non dum se non dimontum sanctum tuam et et abarata la tua. E di tuoi volatari Dei, ed en quini divica di uno tutto meum. Confte muti vincita, la Deus, Deus meus, quae svisis anima mea, di quale di tuo vas me. Sperin Deo, quoni mei tocum di Dei votini, salutare votus me, et Deus meus. Gloria, Patria, Filio, Spirito e Santo, si poderat in principio e non che sempre, ed in secula seculorum. Amen. E tu hai volatare Dei, ed è in cui ridificare il giugno tutto meo. Auditorium nostro, in nome dei Domini, qui fece cielo e terra. Confiti, o Dei potenti, via di Maria, e sempre vigili, via di Natale, Arcangelo, via di Vare Battista, e Santi Sposti, Spetto e Paolo, e altri uomini, Maria, Viani, Omnibus, Santi, Zuri, Sfratez, Qui è per darvi di miscogitazione, me lo d'offrire, me lo culpa, me lo culpa, me lo maxima culpa. E io prego le altre a Maria, mi sembri vigile, mi ha di mutare il mancangelo, mi ha di mutare il battista, un santo sposto stato, me paolo, me ha di mutare Maria, un piano, me il santo sposto adres, orrare con me, donna, me lo mostro. Miseria tutti i dico che non devo, si venisco a tutti i figli, si venisco a te, di te, di te, di te, di te. Ah, confiti, o Deo, o mi potenti. Beate Maria, sempre Virgine, Beate Natalia, Arcangelo, Beato Ioanni, Battiste, Sancti Sposti, Spetro e Paolo, Omnibus Sancti, Setti di Pate, qui è da Vinini, Scogitazione, Vero e Opere. Meo culpa, meo culpa, meo maxima culpa. E io prego, Beate Maria, sempre Virgine, Beate Natalia, Arcangelo, Beato Ioanni, Battista, Sancti Sposti, Spetro e Paolo, Omne Sancto se te frate, orrare con me, ad omino del nostro. Miseria tu vesci, di potenzi, di vesci, 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 di vita, di vita, di vita, di vita. Amen. Indulgenzi, di vesuzione, di vesci, di missione, di vesci, 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 Domine et ari ratione meo, et clamo meus et e bella, Domino suo visco, et cum spirito tuo, orde bus. Iusita, te cante verum Domine, nomen sanctum tuum, et vitrice manuam tuam la deverunt parite, quodiam sapientia perutos mutum, et linguas infantium feci disertas. Domine, Dominus noste, quam admirabile es nomen tuum in universa terra. Gloria, Patrie, Filio, e Spiritu, e Santo, sicur darat in principio, e nunca e sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Justi, decante verunt, Domine, nomen sanctum tuum, et vitrice manuam tuam la deverunt parite, quoniam sapientia peruitos mutum, et linguas infantium feci disertas. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, 
Chrysalison, Chrysalison. Chrysalison, Chrysalison, Chrysalison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terpax dominibus bone voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, gracias a Dios que mi prate mandan gloria tua. Domine Deus rex celestis, Deus Pater Nodipotens, Domine Filio Unigenite, Gesù Christe, Domine Deus Almus Dei, Filius Patris, qui talis peccato mundi, miserere nobis, qui talis peccato mundi, suscipe deprecationem nostram, qui sedis et extram patris, miserere nobis. Quoniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus, Jesu Christe, cum sanctus spiritu in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Paxo Vobis, et cum spirito tu. Orde. Domine Jesu Christe, qui ad recolendam memoriam dolorum sanctissime genitricis tue, per septum beatus patres nova seborum, eus familia ecclesiam tuam fecundasti, concede propitius, it annos eorum consociar refletibus, ut perfro amor et gaudis. Qui vivis o regnes con Deo Pate, in unitatis unitus sancti Deus, per ogni secula seculorum. Amen. Nexo libri sapientia. Laudemus virus gloriosus et parentes nostros in generazione sua, multam gloriam feci dominus magnificentia sua e seculo, dominantes in potestatibus suis, homines magni vedute et prudentia sua crediti, nunciantes in profetis dignitatem profetarum et imperantes in presenti populo, et vedute prudentiae populi sanctissima verba. In peritia sua recurrentes modus musicos et narrentes termina scripturarum, homines di vites in vetute, poci frugini studium habentes, pacificantes in domibus suis. Omnis isti in generationibus gentis suae gloria et exisunt, et in diebus suis habent for in laudibus. Quide iris nati sunt reliquerunt nomen erandi laudes eorum, et sunt quorum non est memoria, eri erunt quasi qui non fluerim, et nati sunt quasi non nati, et fili ipsorum cum ipsis. Sed fili viri misericordiae sunt, quorum pietates non defuerunt, cum semine eorum temere in bona, hereditas sancta nepotis eorum, et in testamenti stetit semen eorum, et fili eorum propte ilius solcusque in eterno manent, semene eorum et gloria eorum non devenim quecur, Quo prolipsorum in pauci supputus sunt, et nomen eorum vivit in generationem et generationem. Sapientia missorum narit populi, et laudem eorum non siet ecclesia. Leo gratias. Electi me non laboratunt frustra neque geminamunt in contupazione, quia seme benedictorum dominic est, et nepotes eorum cum eis. Quo proripsorum in pax pace supulta sunt, et nomen eorum vivit in generationem et generationem. Qui seminat in lacrimis in exultatione metent, eiuntes ipantet flebant vitentes semina sua, verientes autem venient cum exultatione, potantes manipulos suos. Dominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, sequentia sancti vangelii secundum et teium, gloria tibi Domine. In illo tempore dixit Petrus ad Iesu, ece nos genicuimus omnia resicuti sumus te, quid ergo erit nobis? Iesus autem dixit iris, amen dico gobis, quod vos qui secuti estis me in regenerazione, cum sedli filius hominis in sedi mestasi sue, sed evitis et vos supersedis duodicem, judicantes duodicem tribus Israel. Et omnis qui reliquerit omum per fratres, aut usorores, aut patrem, aut matrem, aut usorem, aut filius, aut alpros, propte nomen meum, centum plumetipiet et vitam eternam posidevit. Laus, Ivi Christi.
on this, the feast day of the seven holy founders of the Servite Order. The lesson is from the Book of Wisdom. Let us now praise men or renown and our fathers in their generation. The word hath wrought great glory through his magnificence from the beginning. Such as have borne rule in their dominions, men of great power and endued, in, endued with their wisdom, showing forth in the prophets the dignity of prophets and ruling over the present people, and by the strength of wisdom instructing the people in most holy words. Such as by their skills sought out musical tunes and published canticles of the scriptures. Rich men in virtues, lovers of beautifulness, living at peace in their houses. All these have gained glory in their generations and were praised in their days. They that were born of them have left a name behind them, that their praises might be related. And there are some of whom there is no memorial, who are perished as if they had never been, and are born as if they had never been born, and their children with them. But these were men of mercy, whose godly deeds have not failed. Good things continue with their seed. Their posterity are a holy inheritance, and their seed hath stood in the covenants, and their children for their sakes remain forever. Their seed and their glory shall not be forsaken. Their bodies are buried in peace, and their name liveth unto generation and, gen and generation. Let the people show forth their wisdom, and the church declare their praise. And the Holy Gospel is the continuation of that according to St. Matthew. At that time, Peter said to Jesus, Behold, we have left all things and have followed thee. What therefore shall we have? And Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the seat of his majesty, you also shall sit on twelve seats, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall possess life everlasting. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, orto nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in horror motis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast mass on this, as we said, the feast of the seven holy founders of the Servites. There were seven councillors of Florence who founded the Servants of Mary, otherwise known as Servites, in 1233. The best known were Saint Juanfilio de Monaldi and Saint Alessio de Falconiere, who served as a lay brother all of his life. The other five were also from influential families in Florence and were all members of the Confraternity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through this association, they grew spiritually and longed for something more. Thus, under the direction and advice of their bishop, the majority became priests, forming the servants of Mary, i.e. the Servites. Can you imagine seven prominent men of any large modern city banding together, leaving their homes and profession, and going into solitude for a life directly given to God? because this is what happened in the cultured and prosperous city of Florence in the middle of the 13th century. At this time, the city was torn with political strife as well as by the heresy of the Qatari, morals were low and religion neglected. On the Feast of the Assumption in 1233, seven of the members of a Florentine confraternity devoted to the Holy Mother of God were gathered in prayer under the presidency of Alessio Falconieri. The Blessed Virgin appeared to the young men and exhorted them to devote themselves to her service in retirement from the world. It was in 1240 that they decided to withdraw together from the city to a solitary place for prayer and the service of God. Their aim was to lead a life of penance and prayer, but they soon found themselves disturbed by increasing numbers of visitors. They adopted the rule of St. Augustine, wore black cassocks, and strove to emulate the mendicant friars like the newly founded Franciscans and Dominicans. They next retired to the deserted slopes of Monte Senario near Florence, 
where the Blessed Virgin appeared to them again. There the nucleus of a new order was formed, called Servants of Mary, in recognition of their special manner of venerating the seven sorrows of Our Lady. In 1244, under the direction of Saint Peter of Verona, Dominican, this small group adopted a religious habit similar to the Dominican habit, choosing to live under the rule of St. Augustine. The new order took a form resembling more the mendicant friars than the older monastic orders. One of the most remarkable features of the new foundation was its wonderful growth. Even in the 14th century, the order had more than 100 convents in several nations of Europe, as well as in India and on the island of Crete. The Rosary of the Seven Sorrows is one of their regular devotions, as is also the Via Matris, or Way of the Cross of Mary. Their order was officially approved by Pope Innocent IV in 1259, and canonically approved by Blessed Pope Benedict XI in 1304. There was also a contemplative order of Servite nuns, founded by two penitents of St. Philip Benizi, and a third order of nuns dedicated to treating the poor and sick, as well as educating children. This was founded by a relative of St. Alessio's, St. Giuliano Falconieri, in 1306. The seven Servite founders were canonized by Leo XIII in 1888, who established their feast to be celebrated on this day, the 12th of February. I don't know how many of you um, have seen, I think it's an HBO series uh, called the uh, Medici. But I'm sure many of you are familiar with the beautiful city of Florence. I was blessed many, many, many years ago uh, to have been uh, a student there uh, of music. If you've been to Florence, then you will have an appreciation for the impact and the influence of the medieval merchant classes on the development of that city. The palace, uh, the Uffizi Palace, the Piazza del Uomo, uh, the Ponte Vecchio, the baptistry and cathedral with the great dome, these beautiful edifices to art and culture and we might say liberty and freedom of expression too, to artistic genius. These were all the fruits of this same city that produced these seven holy founders. They were the sons of the families that would create all this beauty in Venice. And yet, they renounced it all. They renounced it all to follow Jesus. And when I say renounced it all, I mean they literally, the seven of them, determined when they had set their mind on their course, they gave everything they had away. Everything they had, they gave to the poor. Everything their fine, rich clothes, their money. And with it, of course, they were divesting themselves too of all the earthly privilege that they had up to that point enjoyed as the sons, inheritors of the wealthy merchant class of Venice. They gave it all up, made themselves poor, and then began their religious foundation. Please understand, what they did not do was agree and determine that they would found a religious order and then divest themselves of all their riches and pool them communally to create financial security for their religious order. They didn't do that. 
They gave up everything first, gave it all away first, so that they were literally poorer than the poor, and then began their religious order. In their vocations, revealed to them through their devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, they realized and recognized and desired that pearl of great price, which our Lord tells us in the Gospels, the merchant gave up all that he had to raise the money to buy that pearl. So these seven founders gave up everything for the sake of that same pearl of great price, the gospel of salvation, the way, the truth, and the life. They made themselves poorer than the poor that they would serve. Just imagine that for a moment. Imagine giving up everything that you have, everything, everything, reserving nothing for yourself. Imagine selling your house and giving away all the proceeds. Imagine giving away all your clothes or selling your possessions. Imagine completely divesting yourself of everything you possess. Can you conceive? Can you imagine? Can you imagine stripping yourself of all that security, of all that comfort? And yet, that is exactly what these seven holy Servite founders did. One can't help but think, too, of another wealthy young man that our Lord met in the Gospels, to whom our Lord said, in response to his own affirmation that he had followed all the law and the prophets. What must I do, Master, to receive eternal life? And Jesus said, go and sell all that you have, give it to the poor, then come and follow me. Now we touched yesterday on the spirit of material detachment, on the spirit of poverty, or if not yesterday, the other day. And I said then how we, each and every one of us as Christians, are all called to live this spirit of material detachment, this spirit of poverty. We may not all be called to give literally everything away, but we are all called to live in such way that it's almost as if we had given everything away. In the sense that the spirit of poverty and material detachment is to live in such wise as one is not possessed, obsessed, nor dependent upon the material provisions one has been blessed by God from his divine providence. Meaning, we are to live in such wise as our only reliance is upon God and our faith in him than it is about any material comfort or security that we might provide or attempt to provide for ourselves. So 
then we might ask ourselves, how much do we trust God? How much are we prepared to put our faith in him, such that we will inculcate this spirit of poverty and detachment from materialism, so that we will not confuse, confound, compound, nor allow ourselves to be tempted by a reliance upon a predilection for material possessions. We have, of course, as you will be well aware, been living through a supposed time of recession. Certainly, there is more of an impact to come post-pandemic that perhaps many are prepared to consider, let alone ready to realise the economic impact upon our society. We're already feeling some of it, but at the moment we are prevented from feeling the full force of it by government uh, temporary solutions. But the money will run out. Post-pandemic, there will be evictions. Post-pandemic, there will be a huge increase in unemployment. Already, though most of the homeless are in fact housed at the present time, post-pandemic, there will be thousands of people destitute and on our streets. It's only if we as Christians might live this spirit of material detachment, this spirit of poverty, this spirit of reliance and dependence upon God above all for all things. Only if we live in such wise will we be able to properly assist and help those who will be severely impacted by the after effects of this pandemic. At the present time, our charitable efforts up and down the country, churches and people of other faiths and none, so far are being supported, financed by government. But you ask any charity, you ask any charitable institution what the state of their finances are after a year of coronavirus, and they will all tell you that giving is hugely reduced well below the usual annual average. Many unlikely to fold when the government subsidies and the government sponsored projects and apostolates end. It's quite probable that the charitable and voluntary sector in a few months' time will not be as able to assist and address those who will be COVID destitute. Unless, 
unless more people give more. But unlike now, it will be a case of not just giving, but doing. I've already said before, in the early days, that this pandemic was an opportunity for the church to be revitalized. Post-pandemic could be an opportunity for a great revival of Christianity in our Western societies if Christians are prepared to truly embrace and live the logical conclusions of the gospel and sacrificially seek to serve those who will need help. Ask yourselves, are you of a mind? Are you predisposed? Are you happy to give and live sacrificially for others, knowing and trusting and believing that God will provide what is necessary to sustain you? Are you prepared to look around at your creature comforts as they currently are and consider the possibility of sacrificing some, if not all of them, for the sake of preventing the deaths of others. How close, how full is your heart? For love of God, for love of Christ, and the compassion of Christ for those who suffer. Do you forever say, well, there but for the grace of God, and think nothing more? Do you perhaps, in a teary-eyed moment, moved by emotion, manipulated by a television advert, sign up to give two or three pounds a month to some charity somewhere? Is it possible, is it conceivable that you could increase your charitable giving? But even more relevant and to the point, post-pandemic, when there is reduced possibility of infection or death, how prepared will you be to get off your backside out of your home and serve those living on the streets. Imagine the witness if every baptised Christian in this country got off their backside post-pandemic manned and staffed as volunteers. The soup kitchens and the food banks, which will have to exist in order to address the needs of the poor and those who have been made destitute because of the impact of this virus. In theory, in theory, I shouldn't even have to posit this question. In theory, every Christian would automatically feel called, feel enabled, feel emboldened, be willing, 
and determined to serve. In theory. But I wonder how many of us will. There is an opportunity post-pandemic coming for the truth of the gospel and of our faith and religion to be revealed and made manifest in such wise that people could only but respond positively and appreciatively. No more the condemnation and the judgment, no more the insults and the mockery and the jeering, if every Christian could fulfill that new commandment Christ gave to his disciples to love one another as he loves. For the world will then recognise such Christians as his disciples. These, my brothers and sisters, are questions we must ask ourselves. There are a great many postulating about the demise of Christianity in the West. Many speculating as to how many Christians will return to places of worship, to churches, when they are reopened. Let alone anyone considering what the witness of the gospel may or could be like post-pandemic. It could be something truly wonderful. And it wouldn't require everyone giving up everything and making themselves poorer than the poor. It would only require giving up enough to make a difference. but how many will? As we keep saying, Christianity is not a just an ideology. It's not just a philosophy. It's not even just a theology. It is not something that just requires intellectual assent. But it is a lived experience. It is a way of living. The teachings of the scriptures of Christ and the Apostles are meant to be lived. Not just studied, not just talked about, not just critiqued, not just compared with other ideologies and philosophies and theologies. The Christian faith is supposed to be incarnational, meaning manifested, realized, expressed, lived. This 
is the challenge that faces the church today. I wonder. Whether they that claim to be the church today can rise to the challenge. But nothing is impossible with God. Time is now for all of us as Christians, whom I hope have been utilising this time of coerced and imposed seclusion and isolation to deepen their relationship with Christ. So that when we are able once more to mix in society, there will be more of us confident and determined to witness manifestly to Christ in our lives. For the sake and for the benefit of others in expression of our sincere love and desire for God. Let us pray. This might be so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Nominus vobiscum et cum spirito tuo. Orde. Aducam eus in montem sanctum meum, et letificabo eus in domo orationis mei. Holocausto reorum et victime eorum placebunt mihi super altare meum.
Babilonia, secula seculorum. Amen. In Dominus Vaviscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, sosum corda, habemus and Dominum, gracias a camus, Domino Deo Nostro, digno mediustum eis. Vene, digno mediustum eis, ecum et salutari, nos divi semere dubica, et gracias agere, Domine Sancte Pater, omnibutem de terne Deus, Pe Christum Dominum Nostrum, pe cum est statum tuum laudum de angeli, adorante dominazione estremus potestates, celi ciorunque vetute de meate serafim, sosus mutazione contelicant, cum vivos in osis vosis ultimitio beste precamur, sublici confessione di gentes. Sanctus! 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 Dominus Deus Sabeanta, plenis un celi et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis.
Glaube ich, Gott, weil wir tun uns. Erronia secula seculor. Amen. Orne, recete, recete salvo. Receti salutaribus maleti e divina institutione formati. Alevus dice. Pater nostre e pieri sin cedi, sangue mi cedi tu nomo tuum, e veni ad regnum tuum, fiat volontas tua, sicut in cedo et in terra. Pane nostrum quotidiano da nobis quotidie, dimita in nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libra nossa mano. Erronia secula seculorum. Amen. Faxa Domini sit semper vobiscum et cum spirito tuo. Ecce agnus Dei, ecce qui tolit peccatum munti. Domine non sum dignus, sut in tre sut tectum meum, sed pentum dic vembo et sen nabitur anima mea. 
und da haben wir einen anderen Ding, das so die Interesse und denkt um mich. Seit Tante und ich wollen, wo jetzt sein Nabi tor anima mehr. Und da haben wir einen anderen Ding, das so die Interesse und denkt um mich. Seit Tante und ich wollen, wo jetzt sein Nabi tor anima mehr. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen.
nego vas energi de mundo udeatis et frutum efferatis et frutus veste madea. Nobilo sua viscum et cum spirito tu. Orde. Celestibus refecti misteriis te, Domine de Frecamur, ut porum feste pecolibus in imitantes exempla, juxta crucem Iesu con Maria Madre, Matreus fideliter ad stemus, et igusem redemsionis fructum feci pede meriamur. Perliundum Dominum Nostrum Iesum Christum Filium Tum, qui tecum de vita regna ad humanitati Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia sicula siculorum. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, ite misa est, Deo gratias. Et nomen Domini Benedictum, et sub nunco tusque in secula, auditorium nostrum, et nomen Domini, qui feci ceilum et teram, benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. Pate, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Nominus Obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, inizium sancti evangelii, secundum più quandem, gloria di vittoria. In principio, ore bevum, e bevum, e retabu Deum, e Deum se ne bevum, hoc erat in principio a tu Deum, omnium prusum functus sum, e simso fatumis nihil, cor fatum est. In ipso vita erat, e vita erat, lux hominum, e lux in terno, e sluce, e tenebre er non comprehenderum, cui come ho messo sedere con la vera lancio annes, e in veriti testimoni, mu testimoni, e bere tu lume, e tam des prendere tu ilum, Nome in tele lux, et tu testimoni e vere tu lumine, ere lux vere con quale lumina tu omnem hominem verientem in hocundum, e mundo in alto mundus professum functus est e mundus non coniogi. In propri veriti sum non eceperum, qual corantum eceperum, de em de espressatum filius de infieri, che qui credi nomine eis, qui non e sanguinius, nec volontati carnis, nec volontati, nec ex volontati viris, ed ex deo nati sum. Et verbum carro factum eis, et habitabit in nobis, et vinimus gloria, et meus gloria, quasi unigenite a Patria, per un grazia e veritatis. Neo gratias. How many for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. How many for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. How many for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. Through thee do we cry, poor banished children of thee. Through thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn, then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy <coughs> of the promises of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who art our refuge and our strength, through thy mercy on thy people who cry to thee, and by the intercession of the glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and St. Joseph, her spouse, of thy blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints, in mercy and goodness hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners 
and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell, Satan and all wicked spirits, who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. May the seven holy servite founders pray for us. St. Catherine of Stenning, pray for us. St. Wilfred of York, pray for us. St. Richard of Chichester, pray for us. St. Louina of Alfriston, pray for us. Our Lady of Walsingham, pray for us. Our heavenly patron saints, pray for us. Our holy guardian angels, pray for us. Our Lady Queen of Heaven, all the angels and saints, pray for us. <laughs>
Old Roman TV, needs your help. So that as many people as possible can find us. We need you to share, like, tweet, and emote, every episode you watch. We need everybody to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we can monetize it. Subscribing to the ORTV YouTube channel means you can re-watch your favorite or missed episodes whenever you like. But to really help us, we need regular financial support to enable us both to sustain and to improve our programs. Becoming a patron means not just receiving great merch, but also other privileged benefits like advanced viewings, premieres, sponsor surveys, unique interviews, and many other benefits, including a regular mass intention. Old Roman TV. Presenting the same thing. Today. As yesterday. For tomorrow.